Um, welcome, and uh, these are archived online, and, and I just posted uh, the link to our past webinars. So we try to put all our webinars at one place. You can also watch the virtual farm tours um, and uh, the Q&A Fridays that we do uh, every two weeks. They're also on the same link and that's in the chat box. So welcome again. This is um, I'm just gonna give, give you a quick update on some of the vegetable um, IPM work that is going on around the state. And uh, uh, these are some of the resources that you are probably already familiar with. Uh, please uh, subscribe to the newsletters and, uh, and these other resources on Twitter and Instagram that are available. Um, let's see if I can advance my slides. All right, as Alina had already alluded to, nonstop rains is what we have seen this spring. So uh, this cartoon just kind of summarizes my feelings at this point uh, uh, with this nonstop rains um, where the plots are under practically underwater and uh, it has been incredibly hard to uh, go out and do scouting, spraying. So we are behind in a lot of, uh, lot of uh, places uh, where we do, we're doing the work and same is the case in the farmer's fields. Um, and this causes a lot more disease pressure. So the, I think this is a great year for uh, 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 all the plant pathology friends I have uh, and uh, not so good so far for entomology. Uh, but uh, things may change. We are never far away from uh, next drought. And uh, even though we have so much water and there's quite a bit of, uh, uh, of natural enemy uh, action out there. So you have a lot of the uh, insect pathogens that are active because of the high humidity. Uh, even then we still have these uh, caterpillars that are, that are out there. In fact, the fall armyworm, which is on, on the picture on the top, uh, incredibly high, almost five times higher pressure this year uh, than last year this time. So, uh, and the beet armyworms are just catching up. Uh, you'll see these numbers, updated numbers in a blog article that is um, uh, being posted soon. I'll send an email out to the teams and also post it on Facebook. Once the blog article comes out, uh, that will have the numbers, but the top row are the armyworms and these armyworms, they lay eggs in bunches. So you'll see them laying eggs uh, on the uh, top parts of the soft leaves uh, on the underside. And then we have these other uh, insects like the tomato fruit worm, hornworm, loopers. Uh, and these insects, they lay eggs individually. Oops. Um, so these are the updated numbers for the uh, uh, are different moths. Uh, again, uh, fall armyworms are almost five times higher than uh, uh, the normal. And the uh, beet armyworms and southern armyworms are now catching up. So all these armyworms are active at once, uh, except for perhaps the yellow striped armyworm. Uh, you may see more of that near the Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast areas uh, around Mobile and Baldwin counties. And then the loopers are, are increasing. Uh, soybean looper is typically a later season pest. Um, tomato fruit worms, pretty high also. Uh, not so much bud worms this year. Um, and again, uh, these traps are on commercial farms as well as research locations with multiple crops. Uh, vine borers have been very, very active as well. And as I have noted on many of the Facebook social media posts, a lot of vine borer activity this year. So talking about vine borer, um, it, it does get confusing about with all these um, uh, with all the different insects that are out there. Oops, um, all the different borers that are out there. For example, uh, pickle worms that typically are on the uh, on the fruits, on the flowers, uh, in squash and uh, cucumbers. We see the vine borers lay eggs. The adults lay eggs right at the base of the plant, uh, and then there's that big fat larva inside the stem. And melon worms. Uh, melon worms can be anywhere on the stem as well as on the leaves and fruits. And you may see some uh, webbing. Uh, so just like spider webs, you may see some webbing and then multiple caterpillars feeding um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the fruits, on the leaves. So uh, by putting them side by side, you may see some differences. And uh, again, moth, the squash vine border is a day flying uh, moth, uh, unlike the others. 
When we talk about control, this is how I always try to segment uh, the, um, uh, the IPM plan, how you should plan something. For example, if you're open field crop, uh, and especially if you want to be organic uh, and, and um, uh, looking for uh, some organic recommendations, then trap cropping is a really good way of getting the um, leafful bugs, sting bugs away from your main crop. Um, we are using Hubbard squash this year as a trap crop. Um, again, the rains have affected the quality of the crop because of disease. Uh, and then of course, bioinsecticide is common to all of these approaches. If you're a high down producer, look into some of the papers I have and the videos on the Farming Basics app on permanent pest exclusion system. We call it the high tunnel pest exclusion, HTPE for short. Uh, it's a really neat and low cost system uh, for keeping moths and large insects away. And then we have the, for small farms market gardens, uh, we have the temporary pest exclusion system, which includes the fixed frame systems where you put the fabric, for example, super light insect barrier or protect net over the top of the plants in the ground and you, you don't move those frames. Those frames are fixed in the ground. But you can also have movable systems. Uh, you see a little picture there of one of the systems. There's some less sophisticated ones uh, uh, th that you can see some videos online from some of the gardening websites. Um, but these are essentially how we, I think of uh, some of the approaches to IPM that may work for you. Again, you may not uh, depend on just one, you may have to mix them uh, to get the best uh, effect. And uh, also conserve or augment natural enemies, especially with the uh, pest exclusion systems, they keep the bugs away, but you can also introduce uh, beneficial insects underneath them if you need to. Uh, with these uh, low cost systems, uh, like the temporary system, remember to put the fabric on as soon as you transplant or as soon as the plants are up. If you wait too long, we have found out even one week delay can have armyworm eggs on uh, the, or, or hornworm eggs on the tomatoes. So they're really fast in finding the plant. So you have to install these systems really quickly. Um, gardeners often ask me, what are my top five organic insecticides? And here's the, the big list. Um, so we have the uh, BTs, which are really good for caterpillars. And the one that I use uh, very frequently is Zentari. Uh, it's on your screen on the top with an X. Uh, that's Zentari for armyworms, especially. Then you have Pyganic, uh, which is 5% uh, Pyganic. Uh, Spinosad is the other uh, good insecticide for soft-bodied insects and caterpillars. Again, these insecticides are best when the insects are small or low in numbers. If you have large caterpillars, uh, these insecticides will struggle. Uh, neem oil, we get kind of uh, mixed results with neem oil. Um, it, it does get help if you add something to neem. So for example, you can add Bt uh, or some other insecticide and use neem oil and they um, often act synergistically. Insect cell soap is a, is a kind of a low persistent product. It does not do very well in our research plots in open field. Uh, but um, there are uh, people who really like insects also. Uh, and then there are new insecticide premixes uh, in the market. The one thing I've left out from this list is the, um, the abrasive insecticides like uh, um, diatomaceous earth that is also used by a lot of these small farmers. And those products are very abrasive uh, and, uh, and low persistence. The rains will wash them out. Uh, I like to use some of the liquids and then uh, apply them thoroughly. So just a quick uh, rundown of some of the major insects or insect groups and some of the ideas I have on how to, uh, uh, what you can use. For example, in case of aphids, we have tried okra as a trap crop, although that's an expensive trap crop to maintain. Uh, but the insect barriers work really well. Reflective mulch works really well and you'll see them in published literature. And then we have organic insecticides like soap, uh, biganic, uh, any of the oils will work to smother them uh, and then release or protect the insect predators. That's very important in case of aphids. So especially for conventional farmers, uh, it's very important. There are, if you're a conventional farmer, there are very 
selective products now in the in the market that only knock out aphids and they are very effective and I highly recommend them. Um, thrips, uh, again, uh, try to grow resistant varieties. Um, it's very important because the tomato spotted wilt virus uh, is, is still very active. It's still very common to find it with high thrips pressure. Uh, remove the virus infected plants. There is no antivirus. Uh, weed control, very important for both aphids and thrips is control weeds around your farm. Uh, reflective mulches work on limited scale, especially when the plants are uh, small. And then there's products like uh, Spinoza that I've already mentioned, um, and Requam is one of the other products that are effective for thrips uh, and, and approved for organic production. Caterpillars, I think one of the best ways we can, uh, we, we, we can control them or manage them is with the pest exclusion fabric. And we know that we can do that in the high tunnels or using the light fabric and then using insecticides like BT. BT really works well. For leaf forest sting bugs, again, uh, pest exclusion or trap cropping really works. We, are, we always use trap crops in our research fields. It takes the pressure off. It does not solve everything, but it takes the pressure away from the main crop like tomatoes. Um, and again, organic insecticides are difficult uh, you know, they are difficult uh, to control. The adults are very difficult. Um, target the immatures. Uh, and same with the squash bugs. Uh, a lot of the complaints I've seen um, is uh, if you try to try to kill uh, adult squash bugs, very difficult to kill them. Um, and again, talking about cucurbits, uh, I have these uh, three levels that are mentioned the way I approach it. We are using uh, the uh, baby blue and New England Hubbard in a mixed trap crop system. Uh, the the uh, problem with trap crops is space and you have to learn to manage it. So it is a management step, but it's totally worth it for, uh, for insect control on especially small farms. Uh, and you can do the insecticide treatments on the trap crop and save insecticide on the main crop. So you don't have to spray the entire main crop. Uh, pest exclusion system is really effective, especially with the high tunnel pest exclusion system using 50% shade cloth. Uh, it really cuts down your uh, moth numbers uh, by a, over uh, 50, 60%, and that's a huge relief. Um, and then um, there are several organic options for insecticides. And conventionally, these, many of these cucurbit pests are not difficult to control. So that's a, that's a good thing. We have a lot of options for conventional. Fire ants, I'm not an expert on fire ants, but um, uh, I do try them in different places. And here is a list of insecticides that are, um, are available. Uh, not all of them are organic. Uh, so if you're, if you're not organic, then you have more options. But uh, overall, the bait insecticides are better than drenches. And uh, that's for a fact. I have consulted my um, uh, friends who are experts on fire ants. And uh, this is what uh, they've always recommended. And make sure the fire ants are active so that they take up the bait. Um, and then uh, these are some of the products with different uh, insecticides. Uh, they're all slow acting, but they do a good job eventually of killing them, uh, killing the ants. Uh, one thing I left out was snails and slugs this year. They have been very active. There is a blog article on snails and slugs. Uh, the, the major uh, snail species is Saxenia species. These are the big snails that you'll see, and they're being washed out because of rain. Uh, and there are products like uh, that have iron phosphate and uh, diatomaceous earth that temporarily help in uh, controlling slugs and snails, um, but they wash out. That's the problem with rains, constant rains, they wash out and they keep coming, the slugs keep coming. Uh, but look into that blog article if you're interested. And remember to check your, your um, sprayers. Um, Get good quality sprayers uh, that are made up of uh, made from good materials uh, that are leak proof, uh, the, the, especially the nozzles. And then label your sprayer uh, with insecticide. Don't try to mix too many insecticides. Uh, if you don't know, uh, they, the solution may become very hot and can cause plant burn. Uh, also, when you're using products like neem oil, um, if you spray in the, in the heat of the day, uh, it can do plant damage. And uh, I've been trying some of the battery operator sprayers. I really like them. They do have small 
capacity. So you cannot do a whole bunch, but they give you a pretty um, uniform spray pattern. And that's uh, really good, even with the plastic nozzles, like the one you see on the picture. Uh, and they're fairly inexpensive. Uh, when you spray, try to go bottom up, spray from the bottom going to top and leave the residue, let the insecticide uh, be on the top leaves, but deposit most of it on the bottom leaves. That's where your insects are hiding. That also helps to keep the insecticide from shade, uh, from sun, uh, keeping it shade and it increases the persistence of some of the products. So spray pattern is very important. Uh, pay attention to your equipment and change, change the uh, nozzles as often as needed. Um, if you uh, want to see some of the detailed videos, I have several on different topics on the um, Alabama Beginning Farmer playlist on YouTube. Uh, please search it up. Uh, you'll enjoy a lot of these other topics that uh, may be useful. Overall, um, just remember that pest prevention is better than cure um, and manage the insects when they're small and low in numbers. I think that's the biggest challenge that I'm facing in this wet weather is uh, trying to be um, out there and trying to spray timely. And it is a challenge uh, in, in this kind of weather. And then protect the natural enemies. Don't spray uh, when the insects seem to be under control. Uh, don't try to do preventive spraying. That just increases our resistance and kills some natural enemies. Um, and then make sure you use these resources that are on the screen. These are for you. And contact your regional extension agent um, if you're watching the video uh, recording. Uh, contact your extension agent and stay in touch with them. I think they're the best friend you have in the communities um, and then reach out to any of us.